Assalamu alaikum. Today we're solving uh, questions from chapter 4. This question about projectile motion. It reads, which one of the following curves best represents the vertical component of the velocity Vy versus time for a projectile fired at an angle of 45 degrees above the horizontal? So to solve this question before we compare these uh, curves, we can go back to the uh, principle of a projectile motion in two dimensions. So if I have a projectile and this projectile is fired with a, a velocity V0 with an angle theta, so then this projectile will follow this typical path. This projectile initially will have two components. One component is the horizontal component, which is V0 cosine angle of projection. So this will be called V0 x here, the initial component, horizontal component, V0 x. And I will have another component, which is the vertical component that the question is asking about. So this vertical component will be given as V0 y, which equals V0 sine theta. So now what happens as the projectile traveling from this point to the landing point? As the projectile is traveling, the horizontal component will not experience any change because it's, it doesn't have an acceleration on the horizontal component. It is only due to acceleration due to gravity, which points in the downward direction. So the horizontal component of velocity will be throughout the whole travel unchanged. So the same value of a horizontal component even at maximum height, it will not experience any change. But the vertical component will experience change because it's traveling against the acceleration due to gravity. So Horizontal vertical component will first start the maximum, then it will start to decrease due to gravity, decrease until it reached at maximum height, Vy will equal zero. Then there will happen a reversal in the direction of its travel, so and will start gradually to gain speed or velocity until when it hits the ground will be the same velocity at lift the ground if, it, if both points are on the same level. So now we can tell that the velocity has to increase, has to start, the vertical component of the velocity Vy has to start from a big quantity, positive, and then it will reach a zero, and then will experience negative direction or reversal in direction. So if I go back now to my curves, I can see the first curve from A to F, the, the orange curve, indicates that it started uh, the, 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 velocity, the vertical velocity of the co component of the velocity, started big and positive, but it kept going up, which is not the case. Here started big and positive, but started to decrease until it reached zero. So I can exclude the first curve. The second curve from A to B indicates that it was constant, which is not the case. The vertical velocity is not constant. It will be changing. So I can exclude this. Let's now go to O to C. This curve indicates that it started from zero, which is not the case. It did not start from zero, and then reached a maximum and then went back to zero, which is also not the case. So this is not correct. Now let's take D, E. This curve D, E, indicates that it started negative and kept constant, which is not the case. It started positive, big, and then reached zero, and then, and then again reversal in direction. So I'm left with only choice, which is from A to E. Notice that A to E, it means that the vertical velocity started positive and big, then reached a zero where it crossed this point, so this equivalent to this point, then what happened is a reversal in direction from this point to this point here. So a reversal in direction, which means it's now traveling in the negative Vy values. There is negative direct values for the Vy. There is another proof here. 
if you take the slope of this curve, the slope of this curve will be a negative, will be acceleration. So the slope will be delta V Y over delta T, and you should get minus G, which is negative acceleration. This is a clearly a negative acceleration curve. So I conclude that this is the only curve that fits the vertical component of the projectile motion in two dimensions. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Today we're solving questions from chapter four on projectile motion. It, the question reads, a ball is thrown straight upward and returns to the thrower's hand at the same initial level after three seconds. A second ball thrown from the same height at angle of 37 degrees with the horizontal reaches the same maximum height as the first ball with what speed was the second ball thrown? So I have two situations. I have horizontal level and I have a ball first thrown vertically upward. It will reach maximum height, then it will come back and the time taken for the whole trip is a three seconds, which means 1.5 seconds up and 1.5 seconds down. So this is ball number, this is ball number one. Ball number two was thrown from the same horizontal level with an angle 37 degrees. Also this ball reach the maximum height. This is maximum height, the same maximum height. So the question is, what's the initial velocity of ball number two? So this is ball number two. Okay, so in order to solve this, we have a common info between the two balls, which is both balls reached the maximum, same maximum height, and I will call it here maximum height, let's say H. So in order to solve it, we can first utilize the information from the first ball get the maximum height, and then substitute this maximum height into the second ball to find its initial velocity. So to find the maximum height, I have one info at the beginning for the first ball, which is the time taken for the whole trip is three seconds. So because it's identical and symmetrical, the time taken from the ground to reach maximum height is 1.5 seconds. So time from the ground to to max height is 1.5 seconds. Now, if I use the equation of motion, because all these two problems, two balls, are under the influence of a gravity, which is a constant acceleration, then I can say V final, V final Y equal V naught Y minus G T. This is the equation of motion under the influence of a gravity acceleration. So V naught Y is unknown and at maximum height, so I will instead of like this. So at maximum height, V final Y is zero. The velocity here is zero for the first ball. So this is, I should write here for the first, for ball one. So V naught Y is unknown minus 9.8 acceleration due to gravity by 1.5 seconds. This will give me that V naught Y should equal 14.7 meters per second. So this is the initial velocity that the first ball had to have to reach this maximum height. Then I can find the maximum height if I apply V final Y square equal V naught Y squared minus 2G delta Y. Now I can find the maximum height. So at maximum height also this equals zero, and this 14.7 squares minus two by 9.8 multiplied by delta y, which is, which is the maximum height h. This, if I solve this, so two, 9.8 by h should equal 14, 0.7 squares, and this will give 
that h will be 14.7 squared divided by 2, 9.8, and this will give that h equals 11 meters. Now, I found the, the, the common uh, info between the two balls, which is the maximum height, 11. Now, I can utilize this h for the second ball. So, for ball number 2, h equal 11 meters also. So, I can plug it. So, v final y square equal v naught y square minus 2g delta y. Of course, it will reach also maximum height, so this will be 0. And v naught y for this will be v naught sine theta. Because this is v naught, this is the horizontal component, so it will be v naught sine theta, which is 37 squared, minus 2 by 9.8 meters per second squared multiplied by 11 meters. And now the only unknown is V naught. What is uh, asked in the question is to find is the initial velocity of the second ball. So I can arrange this and we can put 2, 9.8 multiplied by 11 on one side. Take this to the other side and this side V naught square sine square 37. So now V naught square equal to 9.8 by 11 and I divide by sine square of 37 degrees. So if I take now the square root of this, this will be V naught and the square root of this and this will give me 24 0.4 meters per second. So this is the initial speed that the second ball has to have in order to reach the same maximum height as the first ball. And this concludes the answer. Thank you.